Department of Education issued its new COVID-19 guidelines. Now, among the plan's elements, uh, vaccinations are still required for adults in school, including visitors, but only for students in high-risk extracurricular activities like sports. Uh, masks are only required for students returning after a COVID diagnosis in nurses' offices and for people who may be showing symptoms. No more in-school testing. Instead, students and staffers will get take-home test kits. But Fair to Spain still has issues. She's the Parent Association president at Soundview Academy and also president of the New York City Coalition for Educating Families Together. So we welcome you, Farrah, for thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, Farrah, what's your major complaint about the Department of Education's plan? Well, I think um, us parents, our major complaint is that um, the DOE is not taking seriously the needs of individual uh, families and their needs. And the fact that we, are, we now want to rely on people to self-report in terms of their COVID status, uh, further endangering um, you know, students and staff. And the fact that there's really no way to measure anything anymore. And it's every student for yourself, every staff for yourself, every parent for yourself. And uh, we think there's, there's a middle ground there somewhere where you can measure more things mm -hmm. and, and still give more freedom uh, to people. So it must make you feel even more uncomfortable when you hear about monkeypox and then polio about, you know, some of the symptoms are very similar. So how do you know what's COVID, right? When, when your kids are going to school, who's got what, right? Exactly, and it's making parents fearful. And uh, to add to that, there's really no choice, uh, no parent choice and no parent voice in terms of offering um, a, a remote option. Uh, to make sure that, you know, if kids, if parents and kids are not comfortable, that perhaps they can still access work uh, through some kind of digital platform. Uh, and parents are nervous because, like you said, uh, we don't know which is what. And it seems like the more freedom that is given with uh, COVID and not having those mitigation measures, the more things are unleashed mm -hmm. in terms of diseases that we thought uh, perhaps disappeared. Exactly. And that they are back. And yeah. it's not, you know. You, yeah. you mentioned other parents. You've obviously heard from other parents. What are they telling you? Well, right now at the Coalition for Educating Families Together, we are working, uh, you know, to come up with a plan uh, in terms of ventilations and uh, mitigation measures that perhaps we can partner with individual principals, individual schools, and teachers in their classrooms uh, to make sure that certain things are. Um, I guess encouraged, right? Since we don't have mandates for anything, but perhaps if principals want to work with parents and teachers want to work with parents, we can ensure that the classrooms are well ventilated and that, um, you know, kids are encouraged uh, to mask up and uh, just continue the social distancing um, and things of the like. So as uh, coalitions of parents, as a coalition of parents, and as obviously, you know, um, parent associations and, and CECs, we are all just working very hard to see what we can do um, on the ground since we don't have the support of the DOE or of the state or the city or even the federal government in that matter. See, I remember when they first uh, implemented a lot of the, the COVID restrictions and each classroom had some sort of an air filtration system, right? They had these portable things. First of all, do you think that that's enough? And, and do you think that, you know, you said, principals should be working with the teachers to make sure they're, or encouraging masks. I mean, do you think that any of that is enough? No, none of it was ever enough. And remember that the ones that were given to the schools were actually of very low quality. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so it seems like nothing has really changed. And then you have schools like for where we are in, uh, I am in the Bronx, um, Obviously, in the coalition, we have parents all over the city, but you have schools where windows cannot be opened. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the guidelines very carefully, it says natural ventilation or filters uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or what have you. So in situations where um, the the HVACs are not reaching the classrooms, so then it's left up to, you know, opening the windows. If you don't have a window, what happens? Or the windows can't open, what happens? Because we do have kids, uh, you know, taking classes in hallways and closets and so on and so forth. Yeah. 
you know. And the people who suffer the most are obviously the underserved communities because um, the schools that we are talking about are located in underserved communities where, uh, you know, there's a lot of overcrowding, um, uh, you know, ventilation systems that don't work, windows that don't open, and so on and so forth. So the yeah. wealthier schools in the more affluent uh, communities will do well, but us, you know, we will suffer. Well, we hear your concerns, mm -hmm. and thank you be, for being the voice of so many parents, Farah. Thank you so much. Have a great day.